and that's a lot of flies. The number one request in the last year has been a moose, a moose, a moose. Today, I got a moose. Check it out. This is a Shiras bull from right here on the west, in the west. It's been picked over pretty good. I got one little dark spot right here, which I'm a little worried about, but it's kind of pliable. So, no big deal, but just a wicked cool skull. The hard part about this one is getting it underwater and not having all this get in the product. So I've got a few ideas. But in the meantime, I'm going to get these eyes out of there. Clean up if there is anything to clean up. And we're going to get to rolling. It's super hot today. Y'all, if you are new, welcome. If you are a return watcher, thank you so much for being here. The bull moose is one of the coolest animals anywhere rule number one in skull cleaning is remove as much meat and tissue as you can so this one came in without the hide i'm just going to remove the eyes that big chunk of nose any excess meat i can i'm going to remove next step is i'm going to shrink wrap around the pedicle and the lower part of the antler any antlered animal that you're going to boil ever wrap them as good as you can i'm trying the trash bag thing here because this moose's horns drop below his crown and so i want to make sure that under any circumstance those antlers are watertight and won't get in the peroxide now if you're new here you're probably wondering about what what about all the tissue up underneath here with this being in that hot water and everything sweating up underneath there when i strip this off everything's done in white i strip that off I'll be able to take the power washer and just pull that off. There's no oil and grease up underneath that pedicle. It'll just turn the identical colors and everything else. I won't even have to worry about it. But it's, this all saves me from having to recolor this beautiful antler. If I wash peroxide up on there, I'm going to have contrast. I'm going to have a difference between the two. That's a no-no. Okay, let's see if I can find a pot that'll support this thing. All right, let me get you up to speed on what I have done here. So I beat that galvanized pot around until it kind of fit that head. I'm really wanting to get that crown below the water. That's the most important part. I'm a boiler by trade. I think boiling is the best way to degrease any skull, period. That's just me. That's not a knock on another way. That's just how I feel. So once I've filled this galvanized pot with water, I add a little soap. I am really fond of this Zote pink soap. I've tried everything under the sun. If you've watched for a while, you know that's true. I love this soap. I just take a pair of scissors or Sawzall. I just cut off a few shavings in there and it helps the fats and oils separate from that skull. I'm gonna fire up that burner, bring everything to a boil, making sure I don't burn around the outside of the pot and up the antler. The plastic bag is a great example. If you're not melting that plastic bag, you've got it just right. Once it's boiled for a little bit, I'm gonna pull it out and power wash it clean. When you're power washing, you gotta make sure you're spraying into every hole and every orifice. Anywhere there's meat or tissue, make it go away. All right, let's get this skull clean.
Once I've washed around real good on the back of the head and I've exposed that ear butt, the auditory bull, I like to remove that piece on all horned and all antlered animals. I stick a screwdriver in that ear canal and I pull and break until that thing pops out of there. And then I take a big wafer bit on this particular one, a full one inch wafer bit, and I like to wallow out that hole. It gives it a real nice finish and it makes it nice and clean. Everything is connected inside that ear butt. It really needs to come out of there in order to get 100% clean. Then from there, just start washing, spraying, cleaning, and then pull that whole brain liner out of there. face kind of day okay I gave that thing a big initial wash and I put it back into that pot I got it now to where I removed that much of the nose so it fit down in the pot and now the crown is underwater that's good because that spot I'm worried about that was dry on top starting to look a little, a little better so let's pull it out let's see if we can work that nose out of there and put some color on it yay Whew, these moose are a pain in the butt. There's a lot of stuff to wash off. Now, once I've got it 99% clean, I'm gonna add in some liquid developer hydrogen peroxide. Yes, for those of you that have been watching, I am back to Mrs. K's because I found some and I can't find the aqua silk. Here we go, y'all, moment of truth, check it out. It should be bright white. Two gallons of Mrs. K's, seven gallons of water. I brought it to a boil, then cut off the heat. This is it. Y'all, it is all downhill from here. Literally, you can see in this skull, you can see some of that yellow. That's just loose meat or tissue or something I missed. I changed my power washing settings from the red um, straight nozzle to the yellow kind of fan nozzle. Doesn't matter if it's 15, 25%. I just like to take big swooping passes, washing off all that yellow junk that I missed. I took that thing out of the initial color batch 
I washed it. You never know what's still on the skull until you take it out of that. Anything that uh, is on there will be yellow and the skull will be white. So I got all that little stuff washed off and then I want that bone to touch that chemical. So I put it back in for a quick drink. Now I'm going to pull it off, cut all the bands, cut the bag off and everything. That should be the last time it touches color. And then I'm going to wash all that hair, hide, stuff around that burr and let it whiten naturally. Okay, here we go. Me and Mr. Beans in the garage, working on skull stuff. Can you tell it's been a busy week around my place? So I've got three videos I'm promising you. A day where I did 14 skulls in the same day, start to finish. Um, Scimitar Oryx, and we're working on the moose video right now because that's going to go up in the morning. But I gotta mop and glow everything either way. So why not put a little bonus footage in there? This is a beautiful Audad Ram. Big free range Ram from West Texas. High West Outfitters. If you guys do not follow High West Outfitters, you should. Good people, giant critters. Good people. So these have been uh, mop and glowed, but the skull hasn't. So I'm gonna put a real quick coat on it. Is anybody in to big old all dead rams? That's one of them right there. I do not think there's a mop and glow on there. You can always tell pretty quick if there is because it'll get overly shiny. If it's too shiny and you're like, man, I didn't mean to do that, you can take a little scotch bright, make sure it's dry, and just scuff it. That'll fix it. I'm more than anything really like to get that back of the brain. All oh, that little. You can see how clean? You guys see how clean with those drilled out holes? I just think that's such a clean system. Okay, done.
don't know where to be. Ouch. All right, Moose Project Finito. It looks beautiful. It turned out uh, exactly how I expected, meaning it's the same as all sculpts. You just gotta be patient with the first one. Make sure you're wrapping that antler real well. But it's beautiful. It wouldn't surprise me in years to come if this crown developed a little color over the years, but it looks beautiful. It's part of its own character. And uh, thank you like always for watching. If you want to see more of what we do, follow Instagram. Follow Whitebone Creations on Instagram. We post quite a bit more often. Um, it's just easier when you're remote filming hunts or whatever. But that is it. The Moose Skull.